Hello, welcome to Saturday Night Bible Study. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for um, the, the weather being so nice. And thank you for your love and your spirit. Help us and guide us through. First Corinthians 4, we'll start with verse 8. First Corinthians 4, 8. Now you are full, now you are rich. You have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God you did reign, that we, that we also might reign with you. For I think, think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we in, entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. I write not, not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me for this cause. I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach every everywhere in every church now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you but I will come to you shortly if the Lord and if the Lord and will know not uh, the speech of them which are puffed up but the power for the kingdom is of God and for the kingdom of God is not in in word but in power what will ye what will you uh, shall I come unto you with a rod or in love in spirit uh, and in spirit of meekness so we have the uh, continuation of uh, chapter four, and he has uh, he's uh, telling them, kind of showing them who who they are and who and who who the apostles are and who he sees that uh, Christ is having them what what Christ has made them to be, and uh, so we'll go to Acts chapter seven. Acts chapter 7, verse 47.
Be it the Most High dwells not in temples made with hands, as uh, saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? says says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? Yea, stiff, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. Which of you, now which of the prophets, have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one and of you and whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers who have who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it so have uh uh, recounting of what uh, of what there was of old, the fact that um, the that God worked through prophets, and that all of the and that all of the uh, and that all of the um, all of the leaders, their 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 fathers and their their the people before them, that they they persecuted and killed the prophets and and they uh, they think that they are are so high and mighty but yet uh, they do much of the same stuff and telling them that they they are they are stiff-necked that they that they are resisting God and resisting the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, d telling them, telling them who they are and who God sees them to be. So we'll go to Psalm forty-four. Verse twenty-two. Psalm forty four twenty two, yea, for thy sake we uh, are we killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. So, like the prophets, the apostles were also um, they were also uh, sent sent to the people, sent to go spread the word, spread spread what God said, spread the truth of God, but yet it. Uh, but yet they would, they would, they would kill them. They would. They were not going to. Uh, they were not going to hear them. What they had to say was, was not. Uh, what they had to say convicted them, and they really didn't want to change. So, uh, so the prophets and the apostles both had the same sort of thing. Uh, we'll go to Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. We'll start with verse ten. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecution, affliction, which came unto me at Antioch and Lyconium and Lystra. What persecution I endured. But out of them all the Lord all out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea. Men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 
but continue thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou has learned them and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. So we have uh, Paul talking, uh, sending a letter to Timothy and telling him of of the things that that he has um, that he has also had persecution and affliction that he that that all of us who believe in Christ all that's all that follow Christ all that seek after godliness and righteousness all that truly walk the the true path of Christianity we are going to suffer persecution like the prophets like the apostles, we are going to suffer persecution. Maybe we won't necessarily be killed, but we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the future and how things will go. As of right now in this country, we don't. Things don't really go that far uh, very often. But we. But that doesn't mean things will always stay this way. So we have. We we know that 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 is something that is that is a truth. That's a truth that that God has, has said that we will suffer persecution if we follow him. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, Matthew 5, we'll start with verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you so we see christ telling what somebody who seeks for righteousness what We don't see as much here, but we still see a little bit. But uh, we could see more and more as as the as time goes on. But um, but God God has said that this is this is truth. This is what God has said is that we will if we seek after Him. This is this is a truth that that is that is going to happen. It's. People aren't always going to like what we have to say, and that's just reality. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10, we'll start with verse 16.
Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaks in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father and the child, and the child shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is, uh, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of this of his house? So, you have uh, Jesus uh, giving an account to the apostles and the disciples that were around him of what would happen to them. And like them, we, we may not suffer necessarily the same, to the same extent, that, that's up to God, but, uh, but we, have that, we have that thing that we know that, that we, will, we will suffer to some extent because we don't look like the world. We don't act like the world. We don't. Um, we're not supposed to like the things of this world. So we seem odd. We seem weird. At at best, we seem very strange for what for how we live and. But um, we are no better than Christ. If he suffered, then we will suffer. It's something that's common. We can't be above our master. And that's something that has happened to those that have followed God since, pretty much since the beginning. So we can expect nothing different. But, um, but we know that this is, this is the way it is. This is truth. And we can see that in this world that we already, we don't, things aren't going, things aren't necessarily going the way that God would have it. We see what in manners of abortion and how people treat one another and what they think of God and his ways and just the way the world thinks is, is can be so backwards at times. And the things that they lift up, God doesn't see as being so high. He, things are just different. God doesn't see things. There's a there's a difference, and and God's not going to change His ways. He is right, and we are certainly not. So we don't need to be changing his ways he needs to be changing ours we need to change the way we think uh, we'll go to Joshua 1 9 Joshua 1 9 have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither 
be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goes. So, God is always with us wherever we go. Like he was in the time of Joshua, so he is now. God is with us. God, we can, we can take comfort in that. God puts us through. times of trial and persecution and stuff to lift us so his ways can be better seen so that um, so that we have stuff to learn sometimes we have things to learn too but there's always a purpose behind it and we can we can take comfort in that we can also take comfort that God is with us he is always with us to help us to guide us to get us through whatever situation is there and to give us that peace and that comfort in times when it is needed. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. Okay, Matthew 6. What you shall eat what or what you shall drink. The body more than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why uh, take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today, which, uh, today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whither shall we be clothed? clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the thing of it, things of itself. Sufficient it unto the day is the evil thereof. So God takes care of the birds. He takes care of the fee, clothes the flowers. He does all of these things. But we are so much more precious than all of those things. But he looks after the animals. He looks after all these things. We should seek, as it says, we should seek first God in his ways. Seek his kingdom, his righteousness. Read his word and come to him in prayer. And try to and seek and search after him in his ways. And then, and then the rest of it will fall into place. We, we do need to work. We need to think about, you know, things and make sure we're taking care of the natural things. But we don't need to worry about stuff. We also don't need to worry about what there is to come and what's going on. Yeah, being ready for stuff might not be a bad idea, but, but to worry about stuff is, is not needed. We don't need to worry about it because God is with us. He, he is with us. He will guide us through. He will protect us. And he will, 
He will prepare us for whatever he has. Uh, we'll go to John 14. John 14, 23. If a man love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not keeps not my saying, and the word which, which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. And these things uh, have I spoken unto you, yet being present with you, but the Comforter, uh, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things. I have said unto you, uh, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, uh, you, you would rejoice, because I have said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, it came to pass, that when it come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will talk, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me, but that the, the world may know that I love the Father as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I arise. Send the Holy Spirit to be with them, to comfort them, to bring to remembrance those things that he said, to, to guide them and help them. And we should be, um, we should take comfort in it and take a joy that God has left his spirit with us, that the Holy Spirit no longer, uh, God doesn't need to have a temple, doesn't reside in temple made, made by hands, but he has by his grace and his death and our faith, he has made it possible for us to be able to be forgiven, for us to be cleansed, for us to come closer to God and to come to know who he is, and that we can have the Holy Spirit, we can be the temple of God, because we can have God, the, the Spirit of God living within us. Something that imagine much more than we could possibly know. And so we are certainly blessed. Chapter 8. Romans 
Romans 8, 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not makes intercession for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all things we Apparently there was a problem. So, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present. demons and world sure they can come against us but they can only do so much there's only so much that they can they can only do as much as God will really allow God is way more powerful than they are God ha we have nothing really to fear with God we know that yes we will be persecuted because of the fact that we are if if we truly follow him uh, that people are not gonna like what we have to say and so we will be persecuted we will have those times when um, things are going to get very difficult but we don't have to be nothing can ever truly uh, can nothing can ever truly uh, separate us from him and nothing can uh, nothing can can really come against us that that won't uh, that won't have a purpose uh, for God's sake so we'll go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 1 Corinthians 4.20 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not God is God has a word he tells us his word but with uh, but he also had he is action he carries out his word that he says he truly does uh, he truly is he, he truly does do things by his word his word is truth it tells you who he is and and uh, and kind of a little bit on how he thinks and and how he sees things and so we can know that uh, that God lives by these we can know that God is action God is love and love is an action he has shown that to us in Christ and so we know that God all these things are truth and that 
God and uh, and that all of these things are take a comfort that God knows best, that God has all things at hand, that God is that God is aware of all things and that he is greater than our circumstances. So we do not need to be afraid. So take care. I hope everybody has a good day tomorrow and sleep well. God bless and I will see you next time.